Welcome to our training module on tube bundle repair. During the next few hours, we will familiarize you with the basic procedures recommended in the repair of a common heat exchanger tube bundle. There is a great deal of information presented in this module. Therefore, it is important that you pay very close attention at all times. First, let's take a few moments to review the major parts of a tube bundle and their nomenclature. This is a relatively small model, which we will be using throughout the remainder of this course. The first and most obvious part of the bundle are the tubes being pointed out here. They come in various sizes and materials, depending on the service the bundle is in. Both ends of the tubes are fitted in tube sheets, as you can see here. They are called the stationary and floating tube sheets. There is a very simple way of discerning one from the other. The largest of the two sheets will always be the stationary tube sheet, while the smallest is the floating tube sheet. The tubes are secured in each of the sheets by being flared and rolled into place. In other words, the end of each tube is expanded in the sheet with an expanding tool until the joint is leak-proof. These are the baffles. They are designed to perform two basic functions. Number one, they serve to separate the tubes and hold them straight between the two tube sheets. Number two, they direct the flow of the liquid inside the shell around the tubes, providing maximum heat transfer between the two liquids in the exchanger. The baffles are held in place by the tie rods, which are anchored in the stationary tube sheet, and the last baffle as shown here. These spacers on the tie rods position the baffles at the desired points along the tube bundle. Once again, these are the tubes, the stationary tube sheet, the floating tube sheet, the baffles, the tie rods, and the spacers. Now let's take a brief look at each of the tools you will be using later in this course. Since the tools in use at your plant may vary somewhat from those we show you in the next few moments, we will concentrate more on what the tool accomplishes and how than on specific characteristics of the tool itself. You will first need to drill out or clean any tubes that may be blocked with residue. This is accomplished with a tube drill motor, like this one. It is quite similar to a pneumatic drill motor, except that it is equipped with a hollow drill extension, allowing high-pressure liquid to be forced through the tool during the operation, flushing the tube as it is drilled. First, the drill extension is installed on the motor the length of which is governed by the length of the tubes in the bundle. The cutting or cleaning tool is then screwed into the end of the extension, as shown here. There are a variety of tools which may be used for clearing the tubes. A few examples are shown. When the operator presses the trigger of the tube drill, the extension and cleaning tool rotate and high-pressure liquid jets out of the end, like this. For obvious reasons, the tool is not normally started until it is inserted into the tube. The operator then applies pressure, drilling or cleaning the tube, and flushing out the foreign material as he goes. When he reaches the opposite end of the tube, he retracts the tool. The next basic tool that is used extensively in tube bundle repair is the tube cutter. Again, the basic hand tool is quite similar to a pneumatic drill motor. This is the cutting attachment itself. The actual cutting is accomplished by securing the tool into the cutter motor and inserting the tool into the tube. Starting the motor and pushing the control lever forward, as shown here. This forces the cutting edge of the tool into contact with the inside of the tube. 
The operator maintains the pressure until the tube has been cut. He then stops the motor, releases the lever, and retracts the tool. This process is repeated for each of the tubes in the bundle which are to be replaced. Once the tubes have been cut, they must be removed from the tube sheets. This is accomplished with a pneumatic rivet hammer, like this. A knockout pin, as shown here, is installed in the hammer. Naturally, the size of the knockout pin is determined by the size and gauge of the tubes to be removed from the tube sheets. The hammer is then used like this to drive the tube stubs out of the tube sheets. The next step after the old tubes are removed is to ream the holes in both tube sheets and reclaim the grooves in each of the holes. Both of these tasks are normally accomplished on a radial drill press, like this one. The tool on the left is a reamer, and that on the right is a grooving tool. Since you should already be familiar with a drill press, we won't go into its operation or the performance of these tasks. You'll become familiar with these on the job. This is a tube guide. It is inserted into the end of each tube before the tube is installed in the tube bundle. As the name implies, it is intended to guide the tube through each of the holes in the baffles and in the tube sheet. When it is removed from the tube, the nylon bristles serve as a brush to remove loose dirt from the tube end to be rolled. Once the tubes are in place in the tube sheets, they are flared to hold them in position for rolling. This is usually accomplished with a flaring tool, as shown on the left, or a flaring pin, shown on the right. The flaring tool is simply inserted into the end of the tube and is lightly struck with pneumatic hammer, resulting in a flare in the end of the tube. The flaring pin also accomplishes the same objective, but in a different way. The workman inserts the pin into the end of a tube and rolls it around the inside diameter, flaring the tube. The final basic tool used in tube bundle repair is probably the most important, the tube expander. This tool is used to expand the end of each tube in the tube sheet to hold it tightly in place. The tube expander is usually driven by a torque gun, like this one. However, before the tube expander is installed in the gun, it is set for the depth of the roll to be made. This is accomplished by loosening this set screw and adjusting this collar until the length of the exposed part of the rollers is equal to the depth of the desired roll to be made. The set screw is then re-tightened. The tool is then installed in the torque gun, which also must be adjusted for the proper torque. The torque will vary according to the material, size, and gauge of the tubes to be rolled. Your plant will have reference charts to be used in determining the correct torque to be used. Once the adjustments have been made, the operator simply inserts the expander into the tube and starts the gun. He continues expanding the tube until the torque gun is running free. The only way to learn this is through experience, since you will recognize that certain sound and the feel of the torque gun. Your instructor will arrange for a demonstration of this tool so you can better understand what we mean. When the tube has been securely rolled, he reverses the torque gun and backs it out. That completes our look at the basic tools used in tube bundle repair. You will see them used throughout the remainder of this course as we take you step by step through the entire operation. Remember though that the tools at your plant may vary somewhat from those we have shown you as examples. Since this is true, it is best that you become familiar with your tools and learn to apply them as we have shown you. We have some questions for you now, 
in exercise number one of your workbook.